to ABA Inside Track, Episode 5, the podcast that's like reading in your car, but safer. I'm your host, Robert Perry Cruz, and I'm joined as always with my wonderful co hosts. I'm Diana. And I'm Jackie. We finally got it this time. <laughs> and I took four episodes. Those of five you are episodes. At home, a little bit behind the scenes. When I edit this podcast, I typically have about a three minute blank uh, space. <laughs> I cut that down to be about 10 seconds. This time it was, it was, it was all natural. <laughs> so, welcome, everybody. We are going to talk today about tag teaching. So that's the official name. I guess the one you would pay for uh, version of clicker training. Uh, We're going to talk about two articles today. The first is Quinn Miltenberger and Fogel from the Journal of Applied Behavior Analysis 2015, using tag teach to improve the proficiency of dance movements. Then we're going to talk about a brief report from Persicki, Jackson, and Adams from the Journal of Autism and Developmental Disorders. An evaluation of tag teach components to decrease toe walking in a four-year-old child with autism. So, without further ado, why don't we get started in talking about tag teaching. Would somebody want to give us kind of a general overview of what that is for folks who haven't used this technique or really only think about it in terms of, say, animal training? Sure, I can do that. Um, Well, I actually learned about it through animal training because, as you know, I love dogs. That's Mm -hmm. right. And I have two, one good one and one bad one. (laughs) Um, And so I had One of them has little devil horns, one of them has little angel wings. (laughs) It's very true. Um, And so I became familiar with clicker training when I brought my dog to a class called Ruffians. (laughs) No. Yeah. Stop it. A class for bad dogs. Um, my, da- my, my dad. My dog had leash reactivity, meaning every time um, a dog walked by us, she would lunge and growl and try to bite the air. And it was really embarrassing. Because um, she was on a leash? Yeah, the and the other dog. dog was on a leash, and mm. just leash in general. Just the presence of leashes. Just, Weird. Yeah, it was silly. Um, <laughs> but I couldn't do it on my own because I was too involved. And I then would go home too every close. day and cry. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. why is she so bad? <laughs> I was like, I need an expert. Um, so I went to, you know, my nearby, my dog training facility um, where we found some certified um, animal behaviorist, not Caesar Milan. <laughs> and <Right. laughs> we, uh, and then I learned about clicker training. Um, and I wanted to, once I heard about clicker training and it worked really effectively for my dog, I wondered, um, if it had ever been used with humans. And then I did some more research and I found about tag teach. Uh, so tag teach is also called teaching with acoustical guidance or tag. That's what the tag is for. Right. Uh Um, and you use the clicker, um, hopefully as a conditioned reinforcer, um, when you're teaching. And so I guess one of the methodologies behind using um, the clicker or the the tag, the tagger as one might call it, um, is that... Right, are you not supposed to say clicker? You're not really supposed to say clicker right. when you're talking about humans. Um, it gives it a bad rap, I do appreciate, I think. though, that part of the tag uh, teach method is uh, the, the woof component. Yeah, like yeah. They, like they kind of forgot to take that part out. I know. <laughs> like, that one threw me for a loop there. <laughs> we'll yeah. talk about that more later. Well, yeah, so... That is kind of funny, actually. They didn't take that out, but they were like, don't call it a clicker. They did find and replace in their Word document, and they didn't put that one up. Oops. Um, But yeah, so the reason that um, research suggests that tag teaching works is because it's instantaneous uh, feedback Mm -hmm. to the learner, Mm -hmm. um, and you can correct or you can reinforce correct responses rather than trying to correct incorrect responses. Yeah. Um, So that's one of the benefits of Mm -hmm. using tag teach. and. I actually came across it because there's an awesome video online um, on YouTube with a mom teaching her daughter to do a pole vaulting um, in the backyard <laughs> with like with like a jump rope and some chairs. Mm. Oh. Sounds pretty, super safe. It was pretty awesome actually. Yeah. Okay. Um, and I use it in all my classes. And then I was like, oh, let's look at some research. And so I I just went goo goo eyes for this. Uh, article to be honest i was like Whoa! um <laughs> and it's a perfect way to introduce an additional stimulus for a situation like that where you're trying to use your whole body yeah and can't really remove your visual attention from something else right mm-hmm. yeah right mm-hmm. because you know i've in the past tried to teach kids like tooth brushing we all have mm-hmm. we <laughs> sure all have Ugh. And it's so challenging to find a good way to introduce a reinforcer during a sequence like that. You know, right. like 
you'll have the teacher who's like there trying to prompt the responses and she's got the dry erase marker and she's got the checklist and she's trying to like do the smiley faces Mm -hmm. or it's completely counterintuitive to try to stick a gummy into someone's mouth as they are brushing their teeth. Like, that's just ridiculous. So going to give you a cavity. Here! It's really difficult to provide an instantaneous reinforcer for some behaviors. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I also think about like the... Like pole vaulting. Uh, right. Well, then, well, then you're talking about the complexity, because when you, when you think about tag teach as it was explained in the articles, you're talking about very similar to, say, the forward chain task analysis, but then try to think about, like, I'm going to teach pole vaulting using a forward chain. Okay, jump. I have to yank you down and praise you really quick. I mean, right, the, you physically right. can't, you know, teach very effectively that way. You could, Well, you did most of that correctly, but you didn't do this part correct. I mean, right. it's it's very, you're very you're backwards. You're not going to be able to get much out of it. You can't deliver reinforcement when you want to. So this was really neat. Uh, I read these articles waiting for, uh, or during my son's baseball practice today. And so I'm reading it and I'm like, oh, Man, I could teach him to hit because you could click, you know, for the different parts of, you know, baseball swing. Where do you put your foot? And rather than the way I teach now, which is you're not doing it right. right. That's not right. right. Look at me. Watch me. I'm, I, maybe I'm not doing it right either because I'm not good at sports. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Yeah. So uh, the, liter- the little research that's been done um, of tag teaching uh, prior to this study. Prior. Ah, <laughs> no pun intended. Karen Pryor. <laughs> Just kidding. That was hilarious. Um, that was pretty good. Um, looked at it in terms of usually a, a treatment package, looking at video feedback, um, descriptive assessments um, for high school athletes, and also a woman who had never played golf before to teach her a golf swing. I'm like, let it was me in me. on that. Yeah, it was Diana. <laughs> She's awesome now. She's a pro golfer. You know it. Um, so yeah, I thought this was really fun um, to look at it in terms of how we can teach these really complex but not complex dance skills. So in general, they are complex skills, mm-hmm. right? Like leaping and turning. A side note, I myself last two years ago decided to be a ballerina after watching the Nutcracker. Oh yeah. Oh. I was like, so oh, inspired. I can do that. And I went to dance class, never having danced before. Mm-hmm. Turns out it is not easy. No. I would think not. No. no. And so I have firsthand experience of what dance class is like, but as an adult, and it was really hard. Like, you're in lines, and you're just going down the line, and your teacher's like, nope, that's wrong. Nope, that's wrong. Put your leg something. And I'm like, I don't even know what that means. Mm-hmm. So by the end of the class. Yeah, man. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And by the end of the class, everyone else moved up to intermediate. Aww. And she's like, I think you might benefit from another round Aww. of beginner. <laughs> so Ouch, maybe, man. yeah, maybe tag teach would work for me. We'll see. I maybe. quit, though. I, I also my... quit, but I was seven yeah. when I quit. <laughs> I mostly remember that another little girl had these really delicious-looking potato sticks that she got to eat after. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. Then there I, you go. So I just quit ballet, went straight to the potato sticks. <laughs> Here we are. <laughs> we are eating potato sticks oh. right now. <laughs> I wish. Well, actually... In honor of tag teaching, I got you guys a little gift. Ooh, here for what the is show. it? All right, let me get them out for you. It's a beverage. Ooh, yeah, have, that's right. We have three Snapple we have three bottles. Three Snapples, and um, you guys can take your pick of which one that you want. Mm. There's diet peach tea, Snapple apple, and lemon tea. I would like peach, please. All right. Here Thank you, you are, sir. the one Thank I did you. not want. <laughs> I'll take either. Uh, I'm going to give you the apple. Great. And I will take the, the lemon tea if that's cool. So do you guys know why? Well, maybe they don't make them as loud as they used to. <laughs> Can you hear it? A little bit. There we go. But yeah, so now we're all drinking Snapple. Thanks, uh, product placement. Okay, well now we have, and then we have little little clickers. We all have little clickers. Little taggers. There he goes a little. Mine's pretty good. Yeah. There you go. I can do that, yeah. Yeah, that's nice. a tagger. Okay, so there you go. It's very cheap to start this process. All right, well now that we are all, we're all all set, we got our props for, t- for tag teaching, let's talk about the article. So Jackie, tell me about how one could use tag teach to improve the proficiency of dance movements. Because I know I've been doing, like you guys, you know, five years of jazz and tap, so I'm going to be a West Side Story pretty soon, so you know. I need some help. I need everything you got. Okay. Yeah. The performance is tomorrow. Oh, I have wow. not been cast, though, so it doesn't really matter. <laughs> Uh-oh. Pressure's on me. 
So what Quinn and colleagues uh, did was went to two different dance studios um, and found two dance teachers and four students, one who was six and the other two or other three were nine. Um, all of them had been dancers for at least six months, which is kind of a long time, but they couldn't do any of these three skills, um, which is important. The teachers attended a two-hour training session before implementation of tag teach session so that they could figure they could figure out what tag teaching was and the responses varied across uh, participants so for Allison she did a double grabbing leg turn which sounds dangerous <laughs> I know the um, names of these <laughs> movements are crazy a switch kick side stride leap and a back catch scorpion kick and we're not going to really go into what those are, but they seem hard. But six to nine-year-olds can do them. True. I can't even imagine what a back catch scorpion kick looks like. I, I would assume it's like a like a scorpion tail, like some sort of bending your... Kind of bending over. Yeah. Hmm. I understand the double grabbing leg turn. Can I you... think that's like an 80s movement. <laughs> you know, like when like they're like, oh yeah, and they grab their legs and they do a little turn. No. Like you're jumping up in the air and you're grabbing your ankles? Yeah. Like flash dance? Yeah. It does seem like you would have on like a leotard and leg warmers oh, to do absolutely. that. Oh, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so, yeah. So, Ashley is doing a single grabbing leg turn, side straight leap. I think that is pretty self-explanatory. Mm-hmm. And a triple pirouette. So, that seems pretty hard. Way to go, Sarah. And Alicia's doing a back catch scorpion kick, a triple pirouette, and a double back handspring jump. Wow. Wow, she's pretty serious. Good for her. Yeah. What kind of dance you don't were do they a doing? Hand? Is this ballet? No, no, it's jazz. Well, that makes more uh, sense. Okay. Yeah, it's jazz. <laughs> I was like, the I don't Alvin recognize. Ailey Dance Company. Yeah, it's jazz. <laughs> for children. Um, yeah, so they wanted to make sure then they met, the experimenters met with the dance teachers, um, and they chose tag points. And what tag points are, are the specific behaviors that they're going to reinforce that may be troublesome during these these, these com- more complex behaviors. Um, and hilariously, as we were talking about earlier, they wanted to align by the wolf criteria. And that is that they are, uh, the tag points are what you want, they're observable, measurable, you're doing one thing at a time, and five words or less. In terms of the wolf. description of, of what yeah. it is, right? Um, which I think is funny. They just couldn't come up with another acronym that was as awesome <laughs> no. as WOOF. Nope. They did social validity measures, uh, which is awesome. They used it both for the teachers and the students, which I love. And, yeah, so that's pretty exciting. Mm-hmm. And they had a fairly strict design, you know, a multiple baseline design across behaviors was used for each student. And it's good to note that the tag teach sessions happened either before the dance class or after the dance class, not during the dance class. Mm -hmm. So this is like a a bonus session for these dancers. Right. So I did sort of wonder what it would look like if you were trying to do it for a group. I know. That would be a great um, extension. I mean, it would be almost impossible for students to understand whether the clicker was for them or not. you would have to not. single out. It's Allison's turn now. Right. And maybe everyone would be, would be practicing, but one person oh, would be getting okay. the tag so feedback. But then others could also work. observe mm-hmm. yeah. her getting the feedback, too. If I were a dance teacher, I feel like I'd want to show, because you know, we can get into the amount of time that the, that the sessions took, but... They were very, very brief. Nothing, no more than 15 minutes. And yeah. so I'm sort of wondering if you could be like, I'm using this method. It will increase your ability more than regular classes. So it's 15 minutes long. I'm charging you the same price as I would for regular classes for 15 minutes. You could just, you could just get kids in and get kids out. But they'd be doing better, so no one would really complain that much because they would be improving their, their dance skills. Yeah. But I think parents want their kids to be in dance class for an hour long, not just 15 minutes. Let's talk about That's it. That's true. But I'd also rather <laughs> You can't have... even drink your coffee in 15 right. minutes. Right. You can't Let's... do anything in 15 well, you, minutes. You get busy. You got a lot of things to do. <laughs> this is, you know, you gotta, you right. probably got to go from dance to... you hoping to do them to... while you she gotta was go in dance. dance. Yeah. You got to go to soccer. <laughs> I mean, you probably got so many sports and, and, and activities. Yeah. You want to get them all on the resume. That's awesome. <laughs> The tag teach sessions were completely different, and they were in, they were individualized. Whereas the group classes, they still had the teacher provide, uh, providing the instructions, modeling the skill. All of the students lined up and performed the skill, and then the teacher told them what they did wrong, basically, mm-hmm. and to do it better next time. Yep, wrapped their knuckles with a ruler. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> do it better. 
So they started off with a baseline session. The teacher just asked the student to attempt each of the three skills four times. Didn't provide any feedback. Just said thank you. Mm. I like that because then it seems like it's a competition on like pump it up. Or, mm. Right. What's that other dance movie with Kirsten Dunst? Bring it on. Bring it on. It's a cheerleader movie. Oh, though. same thing. Well, kind somewhere. of. You, you could use tag teaching for cheerleading. <laughs> you I definitely say. could, yeah. So that was baseline. And then tag teaching, we use some behavioral skills training first to train the teachers, which I love. Remember, mm-hmm. that's always my why don't you use behavioral skills training. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I did. And they got pretty sweet compensation, too. Absolutely, $100. Yeah, man. To do their job. Way mm-hmm. to go, you guys. Um, yeah, so they use behavioral skills training to train the teachers to conduct tag teach. And then the teachers trained the students on how tag teach worked, which I think was kind of fun. Mm -hmm. Um, So they called it a tagger. Then they played some games so that the students could tag the teacher, which I thought was kind of fun. So then each uh, tag teach session was only 12 minutes long. Um, They broke down the rules um, each time. They said the tag point is they showed the student, the student tagged the teacher, then the student displayed the skill, and no verbal feedback was provided. So that was kind of nice. And then they just, if they didn't hear the tag, they got to um, try again two more times, so a total of three times. And then if they didn't display the skill, then they went back to teaching. So, kind of nice. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, that was basically it. They didn't have anything else in there. It was just looking at tag teach, um, with the exception of the younger participant, Ashley. Mm-hmm. Um, Tag Teach did not seem to act as a reinforcer for her behavior, so they added in tokens. Mm-hmm. So contingent on a correct response, there was a tag and a token. Yeah, it's like a tally mark system, it right. seemed like, right? Yep, and she could trade in for nail polish and hair bands. She had to trade, she had to wait too. She had to wait till the next time though. Yeah. Those, those hair bands and nail polish, those some they, expensive stuff. They add up. Yeah. That's right, yeah. Yeah, so but yeah, she was the youngest one, right? She was, she was the six one. and the rest were nine. Yeah. yeah. So maybe It was a a little above her head at that point. Mm. But it's pretty nice, though. I mean, for each of the participants, so figure one shows Allison's behavior across her multiple baseline, across her turn, leap, and kick. And during baseline, you know, they're never more than 60% accurate. But then following tag teach, they do, you know, increase levels to around like 80 or so percent for all of the... Mm -hmm. for all the responses. Um, Mind you, that's like four or five months, though, so... That's it. it took a bit of time to get there. Yeah, yeah. but that was more but in terms was, of repetition, not right. so much duration. Yeah. And it was a multiple baseline yeah. design. Yeah, it looks too. great. So, yeah. Um, and they overall didn't see progress during the baseline phase, with the exception of a couple. Right. Mm. But like, not what, for what Allison. You, but yeah, not what, for Allison. One of the skills didn't. No. Uh, for Ashley, we saw no, we didn't, we saw tag teach alone wasn't effective, So, but with tag teach Plus tokens, they saw an increase in turning, leaping, and kicking for her. Mm-hmm. Um, and then for Sarah, uh, we saw similar responses again. Again, you know, low, low, stable responding um, in baseline, and then an increase in kicking, leaping, and turning. But then for Alicia, her leaping stayed at around 60%, so they didn't actually implement tag teach for it. Yeah. It was unclear... Why? It was a little bit unclear why they did not do that. <laughs> I don't know. Because 60% doesn't... When they took data. They kept, like, right. They kept taking data, but they just never implemented. It seems... As, I mean, 60% to me, it seems like they could have yeah. implemented to see if they could Everybody increase else it. Yeah, everyone else was around that. 60, yeah. yeah. And to be honest, I mean, they did state that this was very strict criteria, like competition criteria. Mm-hmm. Um, so you'd want them to be doing better. Yeah. Right. So, but it didn't. I mean, they didn't point it out to the extent that they wanted to keep it in as a really extended baseline to no. see what happened mm-hmm. over time. And she performed better on all of those skills yeah. too with the with the tag teach. So it's not like well, sixty percent. That's that's her best. I mean, she clearly could learn the other skills. Were they too. like, oh man, she's never going to get it. <laughs> Maybe this There's, is the, this is the back else, leg though. scorpion flip or yeah. whatever. It yeah, is, it right? might be hard. Yeah. The, <laughs> Maybe the the back legs. You're like, yeah, let's just not check. Mm -hmm. (laughs) But yeah, I mean, so it is nice that, you know, they saw, they did this intervention for four months. They had been in dance classes for six months already at least and weren't displaying the skills. So they did see improvement over typical 
training and the social validity results were amazing. So yeah. all of the students scored six. They wanted to see more of it. They wanted it in their regular classrooms. Mm-hmm. The teacher says they wanted to use it. So everyone was like, wow, this actually really works. Yeah. I wonder if if teachers and students were skeptical. You know, like prior, like what yeah. do you feel about it? What do you feel about using this tag right mm-hmm. now? And they're like, this is for you know, dogs or something like yeah, that. Yeah, like just some wonder. pre-intervention social validity Yeah, or I whatever. just wonder, see, like, did their, did their minds change on using the procedure before or after? Well, they, they used, te- the teachers they used had not necessarily been teachers forever. They had to have been teachers for a year, a year or so. So, I mean, they might have been younger teachers who were willing to try something new rather than, I've always taught this way. Right. Back when I was in the Russian ballet and I, ref- you know, I would assume <laughs> right. there'd be more, more uh, resistance yeah. to it. So perhaps they chose teachers with less experience to keep them flexible in terms of trying something new or... Or maybe they all agree. You know what? I I always hated it when my teachers just yelled at me and told me what I did wrong. I would like to tell them what they're doing right is there, but I can't do it. It's too hard, or there's no way to do it effectively. So they didn't. They did an open-ended assessment too, and the teachers commented that they thought it was more intense. Tag teach taught them how to break things down. The students were more focused and more serious. And one teacher said that tag teach was opposite to my typical teaching because rather than focusing on what the student was doing wrong, I pointed out what the student was doing correctly mm. and focused on one mm-hmm. thing at a time. So that thing's really nice. Yeah. And the other, I think, most socially valid point was one of the dance teachers actually went through the intensive training to become a tag teach teacher. Yeah. Yeah. Like, that's pretty insane. Like, go you. I know. And she was using it in her classroom at school. So she was a she was a believer. Yeah. yeah. The one thing I love that they did in this study is they had other teachers rate the video recordings mm-hmm. and didn't tell them what was baseline, what was tag teach intervention. Yeah. Because um, I think that's that really strengthens that something actually yeah. happened and it wasn't because the teachers or students liked it, but the behavior actually changed. Mm-hmm. Um, and they show a figure looking at rating scores for all four participants during baseline and intervention. And for all of the behaviors, for all of the students, rating scores were lower during baseline than in intervention. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty awesome. Yeah. And they were independent observers, so that seems neat. Yeah. Blind raters. Yeah. So way to go, guys. I mean, this was so juicy. I... I, like, really liked it. I was like, ooh, I want to use this. When am I going to use it in every part Mm -hmm. of my life? Like, I don't, yeah. I'm going to start using it everywhere. Just walking (laughs) around. Right now. Yeah. (laughs) Walking around and just just clicker training everything I see. (laughs) So it would be really interesting. I really think that this, this, you know, procedure has has a lot of potential in in a lot of different ways. So I think we should really further um, examine where we could use this and when it would be most beneficial except for just sports yeah i, I mm-hmm. was i was interested in, in the fact that in this this study unlike the other one they really didn't go out of their way to do anything in terms of making the tagger a condition reinforcer which right. is hey when this goes off this means this and um otherwise just keep going and if you keep failing don't worry i'll show you how you know but they never paired it with anything mm-hmm, no prompts <laughs> nope <laughs> yeah it's like I- i'm gonna click a thing okay <laughs> and it was and it works but it makes sense too because oh, these yeah. are typically developing mm-hmm. yeah. children, and they and there there was motivation to engage in the response. And they did say in the discussion specifically that you could lose that motivation um, over time because what they noted subjectively was that the students were um, more focused and engaging in more correct skills when other people were in the studio watching them mm-hmm. than when they were with the instructor alone. So oh, that's cool. Yeah. So that would be another extension, too, to see whether, you know, using this method would extend over time Mm -hmm. or you'd have to build in other motivators Mm -hmm. into Mm -hmm. the situation. What I thought was interesting, too, in the discussion is they said um, they wondered if you could get the same type of response without using the clicker, but just by with just verbal praise. Mm -hmm. And I feel like if it all depends on the previous history in the in the environment. So if they had been in these jazz classes right. with almost an absence of positive reinforcement, then those goods or rights are gonna be really salient and meaningful for mm-hmm. them. So it could be that just replacing the click with something positive could have the same right. type of effect. 
in the in the non animal literature, there there is an effect between just using language and using the clicker oh. um, because of the immediacy of the clicker versus mm-hmm. the short delay between when the behavior happens and when your verbal language comes out. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Um, so they actually have done studies um, with dogs showing the shorter training sessions mm-hmm. with the clicker alone versus with praise alone and then clicker and praise is actually longer than just clicker alone. Huh. Yeah, so it's pretty neat. So oh, they that's actually show cool. that in non human okay. non animal literature but I mean in non human literature, but they haven't done it here, so that would be a good uh translational mm-hmm. research. Okay. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Well yeah, and the other thing I was thinking related to that is if you're in an environment where you're hearing a ton of speech all the time and perhaps it's difficult for you to interpret it what all that speech means and half the things that you're hearing are good job good job good job (laughs) and it really loses any meaning Mm -hmm. or salience there so if you were to try to you know pull this over to like an autism classroom Mm -hmm. i think using an auditory cue that just signals condition reinforcement would be a lot more powerful than trying to use praise so good job good job I thought that was interesting that they, I think they did a really nice job um, mm-hmm. describing what tag teach is. They had great experimental control. They stated when they did not have experimental control, which I appreciate. Yeah, there were a couple um, baselines that sort of bled into the intervention. Right. Mm-hmm. Same levels. But they didn't try to hide it. They weren't like, yes, it's so perfect. Right. <laughs> which I appreciate because then I look at the graph and I don't feel like I've misinterpreted what I've seen on the graph mm-hmm. while mm-hmm. I'm reading the text. So, well done. Yes, it makes the data that much more believable it to does. me when you have a few, like, blips and right. things like that. Because that's what happens in real life. That's true. I also like the fact that they didn't make the mistake of some of the other articles, it sounds like, where they just had, here was a whole huge package of things, and we use tag teaching, so therefore tag teaching is great. I, I see that a lot when it's, let's do everything, but this one's really important, too, and they don't necessarily control for the... The, the different components of the treatment package and you're left wondering well what was did i need this and then it's always in the discussion you should try it without this yeah, like, why didn't true. you try it without this dude it's your <laughs> article <laughs> you know add the tokens after you've done the tag teach not before yeah cool so well, that's tag a great teach segue <laughs> yeah into is my article sure is all right so let's let's go on to that diana so uh toe walking tag teach to decrease toe walking in a four-year-old child with autism. Before we get into that, though, I want to make sure that for those of you who are listening for CEs, you get your very first code word for the week. And the first one is France, the country, F-R-A-N-C-E, France. So if you're getting CEs, that's your first code word. And with that, let's continue with our article. So Diana, tell me about tag teaching and toe walking. Okay. Okay. I can do that. So, this article was in JADD. It was a brief report by Persicky Jackson and Adams. It was published in 2014. And in this study, we just had one participant who was a four year old boy with autism. His name in the study was Ronnie. And he engaged in persistent but inconsistent toe walking and had done so since the age of two. So the intervention that they wanted to uh, look at here was what they had been doing, which was overcorrection. So um, if he was walking more than, I think, two steps on his toes, then the adult or caregiver would gently push down on his shoulders until he was standing flat-footed again. And they wanted to make a comparison between that and using differential reinforcement to um, positively reinforce flat-footed walking in place of toe walking. So it was a pretty simple design. Mm -hmm. They initially did some pairing sessions with the the tagger and chips. Can't really go wrong with chips. So they did some initial pairings there. So each session was conducted, and this is is how they described it, in a designated 20-foot long area with limited distracting items, i.e., a hallway. <laughs> what if we just called it a hallway? They do later. From the get-go, guys. <laughs> they call it a hallway, a hallway in the second paragraph. 20-foot <laughs> long hallway. That's like, funny. Like, it's just a hallway. Let's just be honest. <laughs> it's not a special room. It's just a hall. Anyway, so um, 
each session was wa- was conducted walking down the hall. Like that was the whole goal. Let's see how far we can walk down the hall, not on our toes. So they made a comparison between a baseline condition in which uh, no intervention was provided, an overcorrection condition, which was what the previous treatment was, and then an overcorrection plus tag teaching intervention. And then they did a return to baseline from there. They re-implemented the tag teaching intervention, and they actually did a little bit of fading with the level of reinforcement provided, which is kind of nice, and then did some a few generalization probes as well. Did I read this incorrectly where... Uh, they did the pairing procedures every session in the beginning for blocks of five? They did it throughout his day. Oh. Yeah. Okay, cool. So some at some point during his one-to-one therapy sessions, they did a minimum okay. of 15 pairings every day. So All he right. had continued practice okay, with it. Okay, that, that makes sense. Yeah. And then at the end of each session, regardless of what type of intervention session it was, he got a chip. I think that was sort of the motivation to walk down mm-hmm. the hall. I would walk down the hall for a chip. Yep, <laughs> exactly. Back and forth, back and forth, <laughs> down the hall. That's how people get me on the treadmill. <laughs> chips. Put <laughs> chips in front of my face. <laughs> like a like a fishing a line. Dangling <laughs> carrot, oh, it. but it's chips. Yep. Like a whole bag. A whole bag. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I hear that. They have sour cream and onion up in the in the cafeteria now. Ooh. Yeah. You had to walk all the way upstairs for those. So. Dream team. Mm-hmm. So let me tell you a little bit more about what the tag teaching intervention look like. Yeah. Um, what they were doing during the regular session was every step that occurred, the uh, flat-footed step, the tagger was activated. Simultaneously with that occurring, if two consecutive steps were um, taken on the toes and the overcorrection procedure was put into place where they then gently pressed on the shoulders to have them go back to being on uh, flat-footed. Okay. Um, they did note that there were a few concerns about treatment integrity because one of the therapists consistently reinforced every second to third step rather than every first step. Mm-hmm. So I'm sure they were pretty bummed when they looked back at those sessions and were like, damn it. <laughs> now <No>! what? <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm glad they told us, though. Mm-hmm. I know. Thanks for being they, honest. You know what? They still got it published, and it's still useful data. And then yeah. they ended up fading out the the system. Not faded out completely, but, you know, were able to fade it to some degree. So that was kind of nice. Two steps, four steps. Yeah. Right. Yes, exactly. So they started with every step. Um, like I said, they did a reversal to baseline, then re-implemented, and then moved to an FR2 for every two steps and an FR4 for every four steps flat-footed. Mm-hmm. I'm surprised they, that they got past them because they were pretty detailed in their description of how they were taking video of the steps. They were coding the video after the fact. I mean, it, I, I don't know if they had like a camera down low or if the kid had a GoPro or something on him so you could watch his feet, you know, go along. But and they videoed from behind. But they had all that data. I'm surprised that it went as that it was something that they 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 missed for for such a chunk of time. But yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Oh, it's a relevant. bummer. Yeah. I don't yeah. Know. So when you look at the graph, you notice, to me, first off, you just notice the level of variability here, right? So they mentioned that he was not a consistent toe walker. So he, during the baseline sessions, it was the full range from 0% steps that were taken flat-footed to 100% steps taken flat-footed, and it really seemed to vary day by day. When I saw that, I sort of wondered, like, what else might be going on? Like, maybe there are different pairs of shoes that lend themselves to mm-hmm. being mm-hmm. more toe-walking shoes or flat-footed yeah. shoes. But they don't mention anything like that, but, you know, you kind of wonder what, why that might have happened. But baseline was highly variable. The correction-only procedure actually appeared to be pretty um, effective when it was in- initially put into place. Mm-hmm. So um, the number of flat-footed steps increased up to between 80 and 100, they then, so they, at that point, I can imagine they were like, uh-oh, mm-hmm. we're going to need a new participant. But they went back to baseline. They saw a very large reduction in the number of flat-footed steps, did a return to the correction-only procedure. This time, results were more like 40 to 60% range. Mm-hmm. Um, they did another return to baseline, which was at zero. Then they implemented the correction plus tag, and number of flat-footed steps almost immediately jumped up to between 80 and 90%. Another return to baseline... Um, it was at zero. Another correction plus tag was, again, up within the same range as the previous correction plus tag. And then they did the fading procedure and a couple of generalization probes, too, which mm-hmm. also looked pretty good. So overall, they were able to say here that correction plus tag 
was an effective procedure at reducing the number of percentage of time this child was spent toe walking in this particular hallway. Mm-hmm. However, in two other hallways. And you're right, in two other <laughs> hallways, as noted by Generalization Probe 1 and 2. I wish they told us where they were. Just some other nondescript hallway, you know, the parking lot, you know, where, where else were they? I don't think they say. No, they just said two generalization probes. Assuming this building probably has multiple hallways. <laughs> How different are these hallways, though? <laughs> They're like a hospital hallway, it's like the same thing. <laughs> probably, yeah, probably. We don't know. We just don't know. So they mentioned a couple limitations here. Yeah. The first is what I meant, what I noted here is that there's pretty high variability in the mm-hmm. data. Mm-hmm. There's also some level of variability in the correction plus tag data as well, which you would hope to see that decrease, right? Mm-hmm. When they're looking at this level of variability, they are they do mention those errors that they saw in implementation. So it's possible that the difficulty that they had in their treatment integrity could have contributed to the variability they saw in the data. Yeah. They're not sure. Obviously, there's only one participant here. (laughs) Um, So that always is a limitation. (laughs) Isn't it a limitation, too, that they just didn't do tag? Yeah, exactly. They always had the overcorrection procedure in place. So they never looked at tag, or they never looked at reinforcement alone. Right. Mm. Yeah. You know, when I think about it, and I kind of imagine myself walking through this study, I could see them saying, well, what if the child, Ronnie, starts out on his toes and walks on his toes all the way down the hall, we would never have the opportunity to reinforce, mm-hmm. right? But so, because, but he was doing it Yeah, and, and especially, Yeah, even if, and his, oh, yeah, his rates are point. all over the place. Yeah, mm-hmm. you, you probably could catch him being appropriate in his walking, yeah. flat-footed. I'm just trying to help out the authors here, mm-hmm. Rob. I don't know. That was that to me was sort of maybe the justification as to why they wanted to keep the correction pe- procedure right. in place, but yeah, that's a huge limitation. They never looked at tag teaching alone. Hmm. I wish they did. I know, me too. I mean, I can't imagine the results would have been better. You never know, though. It's possible, but that's I... the glorious thing about research. <laughs> we don't know. Maybe shoulder pressing was reinforcing, or maybe mm-hmm. shoulder pressing was reinforcing. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe <laughs> shoulder pressing. <laughs> I, you know, I, I have to bring up, unlike the other article where, where this felt like a very, e- you know, easy to use and functional treatment. In reality, as 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 much as this is socially significant in terms of how much more appropriate walking this child was doing, this seemed like a very time intensive procedure that did, I, I don't think could have practically been done. I mean, you've got to keep yeah. charging the, the, the tagger, which is its own own issue, and then you're looking at every good step, every good step, every other step, every four steps. I mean, th- this wouldn't doesn't seem like the sort of treatment that you would be able to use in all settings. You know, and the majority of children who are toe walking are not going to be in as you know a specialized setting where they're able to be to be observed for research purposes. You're not going to be able to code the the training you're just going to be giving a clicker to somebody and saying I don't know just oh, try to get everyone and then they'll <laughs> they'll get distracted and forget and then you'll have you know terrible sessions so this it's it didn't feel like it was really effective for a couple of reasons a, a the variability and then b the sense of who would use who would use this I might use it mm-hmm. I might um, only because you have to be doing something right and if they're inconsistently doing the correction procedure. It may be because the staff find the correction procedure aversive. Mm-hmm. Um, because it is the case now that many teachers are hesitant to put hands on kids. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right? So. And toe walking is a relatively benign mm-hmm. right. behavior. And they do talk in the intro here about why you'd want to redirect Absolutely. it. You know, over mm-hmm. time, it can you know, shorten the calf tendons, and that yeah. can be uh, problematic for kids. You know. Yeah, so it's not it's not a, a fairly severe behavior. Um, so maybe the teachers found the correction aversive. I also don't think you need to do it all the time every day. Mm-hmm. Um, so you could set a, aside like designated tag times. That's what I would call them. Right. <laughs> tag time. <laughs> and, you know, like then you could start working on it. Because once the muscles are built up in the leg mm-hmm. enough, according to my OT friend, 
then students won't engage in the toe walking anymore because the muscles have, what, loosened. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's no need to. So that's why they're doing those. So that's why when you're, like, oh. working with an OT in, like, a gym mm-hmm. setting, they're stretching those muscles out because it's usually not, it's usually not a, it's obviously a learned behavior, but it's initially not a learned behavior because the muscles are too tight. Mm-hmm. Oh, um, so is that how toe walking generally starts? Yeah. So it's like a path of least resistance type thing it's where it's easier. easier to walk on your yeah. toes. So once your muscles are stretched out, then I it's... I never knew that. Yeah, it's more likely that you won't be walking. I didn't walking know if it was that, if it was like a proprioceptive stimulation thing. I mean, it could be that too, but according to <clears> OT, <throat> the OT that I know... Well, she's the expert. Dr. Rob Silva. He. He is the expert. He's That's, the man. He so, really is. Yeah. Um, I'll tell him that we talked about Shout him. Shout out. You wouldn't need to unless there is, you know, then other sources of reinforcement coming mm-hmm. into play. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, this. I was I was a toe walker. Hmm. I'm a toe walker. Ooh. I'm a toe walker. <laughs> I w- only when I was a baby when yeah. I like learned to walk. Hmm. So you mm-hmm. probably had tight muscles. I guess so. But then I got those like, you know how the baby booties used to look in the '80s when mm-hmm. we were kids. They're like those like white. Like high top looking mm-hmm. shoes. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Then I then I think they stretch. Ooh, I can't toe walk in those things. That's true. <laughs> the high tops are good for that. Yep. Right? Yeah. Yep. They stretch those muscles out, prevent yep. it from straight them right out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, I want to go back to the, the practicality of the use of this. You know, certainly looking at the correction only. The first time they implemented the correction only treatment, it was it was pretty effective. And you know, given that. I'm curious if they'd, if they'd run that out longer. Would it have yeah. continued being effective? Would it have dropped off? Because given the right. choice of we're going to teach everybody to use these taggers and you have to be looking for these things, or you could just stick your hands on the kid and be like, hey, cut that out, kid. Everyone's going to pick the hey, cut that out, kid procedure because it's easy and cheap and free. And if it's getting similar results, no one's going to no one's gonna kind of bother with it. So I was would be curious to see if correction only – I mean, again, with the one participant, we need multiple participants yeah. Yeah. with a similar, you know, similar treatment. Would that be the result? A correction only was somewhat effective. Does that play out for a while? Is the child attenuating to the to the hands on? Right. Yeah, pure comparison between correction and then tag teaching would have been preferable. Yeah, here for sure. So, inter- but, but to Jackie's point, maybe um, the teachers did not want to do hands on. Or it also could be that the teachers didn't think it was a problem, right? So it could right? have been, mm-hmm. they could have been, we have other things to deal with. Or you're just trying to get from point A to point B. You don't want to keep stopping every two steps right. to redirect this behavior. Mm-hmm. So, and, and isn't it nice to use positive reinforcement whenever you can? Oh, of course it is. Mm-hmm. But there's a big difference between what is preferable to do and what is effective and quick regardless of whether it's positive reinforcement or not. Uh, so, and, and again, you're thinking about where are most of the children who are toe walking? They are not in a research setting. They're not in an inpatient setting. They are in schools. Yep. Yeah, and, you don't usually go to inpatient for toe walking. No, no, no. But I, I, but I don't remember what this... He, I'm this, not sure. this, 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 this child was getting... He was getting... He, I think he had two years of services, and they described him as... He had no verbal behavior. Oh, yeah, that's right. Which also yeah. makes me wonder... Like he was, Center-based program. Yeah. What were they doing for two challenges. years in a center-based program? I mean, he must have been. He must have had some, you know, severe, severe disability. Some, yeah, definitely. Yeah, it did sound that way. Mm-hmm. You know, so again, you know, from 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 my perspective, when you're talking about most of the students that one would see who are toe walking, you would not be in a setting where there would be time for training. There'd be interest in training to use a different method, unless you could demonstrate. Nope, this is the one to do. This article certainly doesn't because it, 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 it demonstrates an effectiveness, but it doesn't tell you which one was more effective. It doesn't explain for why the correction only do so poorly following the the return to the return to baseline. Yeah. So I I mean I, I definitely would love to have seen correction only played out, tag only like we talked about, and certainly a lot more a lot more participants. Yeah. Uh, so I'd assume you could find more 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 children who are who are toe walkers oh, to yeah. use this procedure. Could. So I would like to see that. Me too, actually. Maybe I'll do this. Maybe I'll find some toe walkers. Yeah. But I do love me a brief report. Me too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Can't lie. For the brevity or just for the... For the brevity. Yep. Uh-huh. Yep. Yeah. 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 I mean, you know, let's be honest. We're behavior analysts. What do we do when we look at an article? I look at the graph we first. We flip to the graph. That's what you should do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Potential So brief report, you're like, great. 
I'll just go right to the graph. <laughs> I'm not missing anything. Ooh. But yeah, I mean, I think this was a, a good first step. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and glad, a fun topic. Yeah. Well, I'm glad we had both articles, too, because it was good to see the one that was just, check this out, Woo, tag teaching, super great, and then the other, which had a lot of limitations. It was brief, it was interesting, good good kind of starter for, for future lines of research, but, you know, if I'd only had the brief report, mm, it, it, it wouldn't you be a strong case. It wouldn't have been sold? Well, I don't know if I would have been sold. I mean, certainly... Tag teaching, clicker training. I mean, it's been in the research for a long time. It's I mean, reinforcement. Yeah, you know? it, it, yeah. it's condition reinforcement. There's, about there's it, no it reason dislike. it shouldn't work. No, it's just it's it's a lot more complicated than other other types of treatment. Not it's not impossible or hard hard, but it you know you, you would need more training than just we might not. But I, I mean, I, I don't know what's included in the tag teach. Like the other dance teacher who did the tag teach. Oh, work, so. workshop. I don't know what's, what that entails. So yeah, it's fairly expensive. Um, you can go to a Tag Teach Primary Certification Seminar Workshop. Um, actually, you can go at the end of April at 9 a.m. in Rhode Island. Um, okay. Somewhere in Rhode Island. In Providence at some academy. Or academy. Um, it starts at 9, ends at 4.30, and it is $375. Whoa. But if you are a Karen Pryor graduate for the Karen Pryor Academy dog mm-hmm. training, um, it's only $299. Oh. So... Hmm. The seminar includes cutting-edge tools for teaching and learning, born in science and best practices. That's what it says. Oh, that's not so bad. When they, when they said it, it's very expensive, I assume they meant like, I mean, some trainings you get like $1,500. It's or... the pri- this is the, the primary certification. So you just learn about the, the first day you learn about what Tag Teach is, the Tag Teach Triangle, the Audible Marker, more tools, you practice, and then you leave. Hmm. So if you guys want to go April 30th. You can go to tagteach.com to sign up. Okay. Great. All right. Well, now that we've read our articles. It's Saturday, so, you know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) So now that we've read our articles, any any more thoughts on tag teaching? I love it. Are we pulling in? I think we might be. Okay. Let's pull into the dissemination station. It's like theater of, <laughs> theater of the mind. <laughs> All right, so I think you know we, we, we sort of summed it up with the articles. Tag teach <clears throat> definitely seems like a very very promising way to train. What I would love to see is just more, more, more of tag teach. What are we teaching? Because it does feel, aside from the article on toe walking, when I see tag teach clicker training, it's always this has been used in sports and yeah. dance, and that's. That that's that's very interesting, but I would love to see more uh, application in the educational setting. All right. Well, I I think like we said, it really lends itself to those large gross motor movements that it's difficult to provide other types of reinforcement for. Hmm. What about the? I would love to see a comparison between, say, like a forward chain dressing TA. Mm-hmm. Uh, with edible reinforcement or praise statements and clicker training, because I mean, to some extent they're almost the same procedure yeah. but would you get the same results as say you were saying Jackie with the animals right. of is there too or much a of a delay chain. Oh, or back, oh, yeah. back yeah. backwards chain or backwards chain backwards chain is when you are supposed to withhold the reinforcer to the end mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. So there's virtually no feedback in the middle mm-hmm. whether you got your training step right mm-hmm. which is always really challenging so yeah. that would be I mean that would be very interesting Unless to see pop that skittle right in there <laughs> I don't know if you've ever gotten the whole uh, when you're trying to teach someone to use a, a task analysis. Wait, I have to give an edible when? I'll just give it to them at the end. It's like, well, right. I guess you can. I mean, maybe it'll work. We're going to keep working on this dressing TA forever. <laughs> you know, it's been about a year. We haven't really learned more than two steps. I think you should I think probably. You might be on to something, Rob. I... Yeah. I, you I'm, do a, this. I'm on the dissemination you do this. train, is where I'm on. Yeah, I actually. I'm writing this down. Next stop, success land. <laughs> For <laughs> learning, good. I want to see if it if it works for like in task writing, like length of writing, so you can't stop writing until you hear a click. But that's not really what that's I'm looking well, for. Well, it could promote creativity and novel behavior, right? But it's still an undeveloped thought. Mm-hmm. Tag when you use your blocks to make a flying buttress, I'll be clicking. Yeah, click. I, I mean, then you then you're just using it as an auditory, right? Cue. Yeah. You're not necessarily using it to refine behavior because you really want to use it to refine behavior. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Behavior that's already occurring but not occurring correctly. Mm-hmm. I'm Love glad, it. 
I'd also be curious about what is the extent at which the clicker serves as a condition reinforcer. Is that consistent across, you know, it's, it's across students who are interested in dance. But what if I just arbitrarily was like, hey, I'm going to give you $25 for just being here for the next couple hours. And I need you to learn some sort of a complex task that they are not interested in. Would it still function yeah. as a condition reinforcer in that case just because you're being told this is what it's supposed to be doing or would it not matter because I'm not interested in the final product. Therefore I just, for whatever reason, I, it, it doesn't have the same, same you know, capacity to reinforce my behavior. Like semaphore. Oh yes. Really? Yep. Yep. Doing the flags. Yeah. Who cares I, about that? I don't that? know what that means. It's where you have all the different flags. You can't. It's like the, like the cover of the home, Beatles help I'm album. I'm holding my hands up and moving them around. They like all have a windmill. Their hands. Yeah. Different, different things. It's like Morse code, but with flags. Oh, something I'm completely uninterested so in learning how I to can, do. I but actually, it's a gross motor movement. Oh, I actually am interested in learning how to do that oh. because it was in Di- uh, Diana Diana of Anne of Green Gables does it to oh. summon Anne <laughs> when they no longer can talk to one another and Anne has just found out that she drowned a mouse in the pudding. And she's in the kitchen, and she sees Diana, and she's doing that. And I always wonder what she's saying. So if you're ever in early 20th century <laughs> yeah. Prince Edward Island, you may need right. to use this yeah. semaphore training. So, condi- so, so tagging would be a, appropriate. It'd be condition reinforcer for you because you want to learn your semaphore skills. Yeah, just in case. Just right there. So I'm like, that's what she's saying. I've looked on the internet. If people know, write in because I want to know. Oh, you can't find it. No. Oh my gosh. I know. I think she says, come here. In the TV show? The TV version? Yeah. The one with Megan Follows. It's like 1992. Ah. Produced by Joan Sullivan. I don't know it at all. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Just off the top of your head, you. (laughs) But yeah. It's a good, that's a good, it's a good, good show. I liked it. I watched it a lot on the Disney Channel back in the. I own it. So if anyone wants to come over, (laughs) I have all six videos. Are there they, are six videos? Yeah, are Anna they, Green Gables, Anna Green Gables, The Continuing Story, and Anna Green Gables, the third one, which is stupid because it doesn't even follow the books. Is that the one she becomes a oh. teacher? It's Anne of Avonlea? Yeah, but Anne of Avonlea is in The Continuing Story now on the video. I, I wow. preferred the when television video, show. Do you mean VHS? Oh, I mean VHS. <laughs> I also have it on Blu-ray, too. Oh, okay. But I do still have it on VHS. Do they ever release the TV show version of that? Yes. On, on, yep. Okay, can I get that? Mm-hmm. With, uh, you can see the cartoon series, too. There's not a cartoon yeah, there is. series. Was that like only Canada? Uh, no, it's still on Saturday mornings. What? Not what channel? <laughs> I don't know at all, but... <laughs> so you've heard. I, so I've heard. I mean, I don't know. It was on, yeah, on Saturday. Okay. It was on yesterday. You know that big hotel? You ever see that? In, the, in that show, Avonlea? They got big, this big hotel oh, by yeah, the ocean. Oh, yeah, the white one. Ooh, where that she, was a great, great where hotel. She, where she does her poem. <laughs> That's She does a poem, and it. it's just a Tennessee poem. The Tennyson poem, and everyone claps, and she's got her hair up in a waft and this mm. white dress that I tried to look for. Oh, I can't find it. At one point, I couldn't find it. But I do really want you to know that in eighth grade, I had puff sleeves for a dance. It's <laughs> pretty awesome. And it was blue, just like Anne's And your boyfriend dance. got scarlet fever, just like Anne. <laughs> <laughs> he got the croup. And he had to burn his teddy bear. <laughs> he got the croup, and I had to administer Epicac. <laughs> This is something I I only I don't only know things about behavior analysis. I also know things about Anne of Green Gables. You also have a PhD yeah. in Anne of Green Gables. <laughs> That's awesome. You got to go to McGill or one of those schools. Right, I tried. Through. I got. I got. I didn't get accepted. That's the only thing they teach up there. I think. I know. <laughs> anyway. Well, anyway. So Anne of Green Gables. teaching. Well, what I was thinking about when we were talking about this is. One challenging area that we're often working with children with autism on at my school is swimming and trying to teach Mm -hmm. them different um, skills in the water. And the number of reinforcers that you can use in that setting are very limited. Mm. And, uh, you know, for some students, they are trying to work on stroke formation and things like that, which are some of these more gross motor movements that we're trying to shape towards. So I wonder how tag teaching might do in the pool. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I like that. That's good. Yeah. And it's a good, especially the, you get like a nice, like a sharp tagger. Yeah, you would, you would, you would be able to hear it a lot better than say, muffled, like, you know, who, you know. <laughs> <laughs> No, it's helpful nice. actually, because I used to be a swimmer and it was really difficult to protect your, uh, perfect your stroke. Um, the only way you could really do it is through video feedback. Mm-hmm. So the yeah. coach would take a video of you and say, this is what you were doing. This is what it needs to look like. But it's really difficult to kind of perfect those strokes. Yeah, there's no immediate feedback right. for you. Yeah, and you don't really know how to do it. 
Mm -hmm. So I actually never got any better. Um, (laughs) Well, there you go. Yeah, so (laughs) maybe tag teacher work for me. Yeah, yeah. Okay, Rob, so we were going to try and play a little game with you. Just in case anyone at home didn't hadn't thought about how you might use a a tagger to shape behavior. And since this is auditory, it would need to be verbal behavior that we'd be trying to shape. Okay. Okay. Um, Wait, so, everyone, watch me. I'm, do- I'm doing the scorpion kicks right now. <laughs> oh, he did it I perfectly. I did it. Look oh, at my that. God. It took one click. <laughs> Crazy. Um, that's Jazz so, hands. That's so dreamy. <laughs> so it's going to be um, a word that we're going to try and have you come to with the assistance of a reinforcing click. No, what it would be better if you knew, like, foreign language. So, uh, like, so if I said the tag point is, and then I said some funky word, like, can you speak Russian or, like, French, you would say the word, then he would have to say it correctly, then he would get a tag. Mm-hmm. But if he said it off, like, if I said, like, arret, and I just said arret, mm-hmm. that wouldn't count. So no tag. But if then I went arret, oh. that, that's how you could use tag teaching. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. That was so working. you could do that. Mine's not. You could do that. Your French is better than mine. Ugh. Yeah. Just gotta warm them up. Yeah. <laughs> gotta warm them up a little bit. <laughs> so if you you could do that to me. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I can't roll my R's though, so don't pick that. Okay. Uh. Okay. It doesn't have to be French. It could also be any other language. I just don't know any other language except for French. We all only know. Fr- oh okay. no, Rob knows Japanese. Oh. I know. I know very little Japanese. Yeah, but if you but... know one Japanese word, that would actually be good because Diana does not know it. Okay. Yeah. So I would say. So introduce the whole thing. I think. Yeah. Okay. So I would. I, what I would I do? I'd be like, I'm gonna get Diana to say this appropriately, and the first part is, and I'd say like part of like a long word. Yeah. Sure. Okay. And I click you. You said it right. Yeah. Okay. Here, you can use my and a wolf. better clicker. Where's the wolf? Wolf. What's the wolf again? I got a, uh, what do I want? What do you want? Okay. Observable. Observable, Obs- one at a time. Mm-hmm. And, and less than five, five. five words or less. Okay, so I'll just say the sound that you need to say. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to do tech teach to teach Diana a Japanese word. And it's going to be the word for, I think it's train station. Oh, good. Or train. Oh, it's the dissemination station. <laughs> <laughs> And Diana does not know this word. That's what the important thing is. She yep. she does not no. know what we're yeah. doing. All right. So the first the first uh, word is the first part of the word is shin. Shin. The first word part of the word is shin. Shin. So then you, you have to do it three times. Oh, shin, shin. Good. The next part of the word is con. Con. So you just say it both together. Shin con. Sorry. Just keep <laughs> you going. Go three. Shin con. Shin con. All right, and then the next part of the word is sen. Sen. Is that right? Sen. She can't tell you. He can't tell you. Okay. <laughs> sen. 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 Shin con sen. Shin-kan-sen. Shin-kan-sen. There you go. We did it! I did it! Yeah. And know you love it. She's like, can you tell me? Is it right? And I was like, just listen to the click. That's all you have to do. If you tank over and over, I would have told you. Right. I think that, really made that might mistakes. be really useful for Chinese. Well, I mean, especially with Chinese, because you're talking about one sound meaning different words. like uh, I think because there, there's four different ma, intona- ma, intonations ma, for each. Ma. Yeah. Yeah. I just heard um, a, a poem that was the same word with all the different intonations. Ooh. It was the same word like 20 times over. Mm-hmm. Or is it not? Maybe not a poem. A sentence. Uh-huh. And it was just the same. It was like, ha, 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 ha. Yeah. I want to do, po- I wanna do poem. Because you say poem differently. Let's see if I can teach I, you. There's nothing wrong with the way I say that. Well, I'm, I'm just curious if I can teach you to say it Say it a different way. Right. Poem. <laughs> that, that's not the way. You do You do say poem. I, it's just me. I don't know why I say it that way. Well, let's, let's, see, if we, let's see if we can teach you a different Fine. way to say it. Okay. So I'm going to teach you to say the word poem. <laughs> po. 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 M. M. M, M, poem. <laughs> poem. 
poem. <laughs> poem. 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 That's not how you say that word, though. <laughs> it is, though. Poem? I don't... <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> good clicker. Poem. Oh, that was good. You got it! That's you good. did. You got it! <laughs> you should be quiet. It's been bugging funny. me for 12 years. No. <laughs> I'm still going to say it the other way. That's fine. No, no, no. I, I don't want to change. I don't like it's actually want to change It's not like a southern style of saying behavior. that word either. That's and it's just me. I don't you know. Do TV. The TV. TV. The TV. TV. The TV. It's okay. Thank you. So, well, we, now, we know, now we know how to change how to change your behavior so you're less of a less of a hayseed on the podcast. <laughs> Awesome. That's so sweet. Bless your heart. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Speaking of dissemination station, I want to give you guys the second code word for the episode, and it is train. Train. Like what you're riding on right now into the mind. Shinkansen. Yes. Oh. Very good. I think that means train station. It might mean station. <laughs> Hopefully it means train station. And it's not like inappropriate. I learned okay. it in basic Japanese. I just don't remember if it's a station or the train itself. Okay. Well, anyway, we're on it. We're on it. Yep. So, everyone, thanks so much for coming on the show again today to talk about this very, very interesting interesting phenom- phenomenon. No, interesting... Uh, procedure. Procedure. Mm-hmm. Uh, technique. Technique, yeah. Yes. You can, uh, for those of you at home, if you are interested, you can find us online pretty much everywhere as ABA Inside Track. We're on Facebook, we're on Twitter, we're on YouTube. You can email us uh, at abainsidetrack at gmail.com. If you're interested in getting CEs, you can check the website, abainsidetrack.com, to find more information. And you hope you have your secret code words written down. So, Jackie, did you, you, I know you always have... I do. A word, a word for the folks out there? I do have a word for you. Um, <laughs> it's you, Shinkansen. Yeah, it's the word of the day. <laughs> ah! The next time you hear this word, you're going to scream real loud. Ah! Just kidding. Um, Which no. is more impressive, tag teaching or Pee Wee Playhouse scream real loud when you when you say your Ooh, word? Oh, it's hard. I don't know. We're going to do that study. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Pee Wee's back, so. <laughs> I know. I saw him on Netflix. <laughs> He's back. Um, but besides Pee Wee... If you are interested in pursuing a career in behavior analysis, please check out the Regis College Master's in um, in Science and Applied Behavior Analysis uh, in Weston. Uh, we have both part-time and full-time options. We will help you find a job if you don't already have one. And you get to hang out with me and other fun professors. All of us have a PhD in behavior analysis, have contributed a lot to literature, and we are looking forward to seeing you. <laughs> Come Sweet. on down. All right. Thank you, Jackie. Yeah. And thank you so much for being here. You too. Thank you, Diana, for being here as well. Thank you, Rob. No, you're very welcome. Well, we'll be back next week with a preview of our next, the preview episode for our next topic. But until then, remember, keep responding. Bye. Bye. Cherry.